Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Roth Novak. I'm the CEO and co founder of Party Slate. I believe this is our 55th webinar. We started doing webinars the uh, first week of the pandemic to bring not only digital education to the industry, but to also bring um, industry leaders so we can expand all of our knowledge and become a stronger industry. Um, as part of Pride Month and all of our DEI efforts over at Party Slate, I am so proud to have three incredible LGBTQ plus leaders here to share their knowledge, their founding story, how they get involved in the educational side uh, of making this industry stronger. Um, I am just so excited. I know I learn something new from this panel every time um, we talk and I can't wait to share this knowledge uh, with everyone. And so we're going to record this webinar and also share it on social media and out via email. So if your teams couldn't join, I think there's going to be a lot of great knowledge. So to get started, I would love to have um, each of our panels. Oh, I'm sorry. There's also new people to Party Slate. For those of you who don't know Party Slate, um, we are an industry leading platform for sharing your photos and videos and really becoming a smarter digital marketer. I'm gonna sh share a little bit about what we're doing on our side at the end, but for people planning large scale events, we're an incredible resource to find new ideas, get inspired, and more importantly, connect them with the top leaders um, across the country, venues, planners, caterers, decor companies, uh, entertainment, you name it. So we started, I think it's six years ago, but I count the pandemic as like a skip year. So it feels like five years. Um, and we have over 15,000 event professionals sharing their work on Party Slate. Close to a million people visited the site last year. So the flywheel is moving and I'm just so proud to be part of this incredibly strong creative industry. On that note, um, I would love to have each of the panelists kind of introduce themselves and talk a little bit about um, who they are, what they do, and kind of how they got into this area, especially focused on LGBTQ+. Um, and to start, um, Kirsten from Equally Wed, I feel like we've met over the years, but we really connected during the pandemic, and I've gotten to know you not only through Clubhouse, but just following your blog and, and your all thought leadership. And I've just been so impressed with not only your platform and the education, but also kind of the certification that you've made available um, to the industry. I know I'm partially through the certification. I'm not finished yet. I'm partially through it. And I'm just um, really proud to have you on this panel. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in the industry and um, a little bit about what you're doing and later we're gonna come back and talk more about the certification. Sure, well, thank you so much, Julie and Party Slate for having us and for putting together this extraordinary panel. I'm so honored to be up here with Shonda and Rick. Um, so, and happy Pride, uh, everyone. I'm very excited that we're doing this on the first day of Pride. So my story and Equally Wed, Equally Wed Pro story begins with uh, how I always wanted to get married. Uh, as a little girl, I was just, as I was growing up, that's, I planned on getting married, planned on getting married, running a magazine and writing a book. So I have all, done all those things. But when my wife proposed to me in 2008, we had a really hard time finding resources for our wedding. And we had a hard time finding vendors. For our wedding, people who wanted to uh, work with our with us with our our type of wedding, you know, as an LGBTQ plus couple, and it was really heartbreaking. I thought that was a modern time type of thing, so it was really disappointing. And so we, my wife and I, we have a writing and editing background on my side, graphic design and web development side on Maria's side. So we launched Equally Wed, the ultimate guide to planning your LGBTQ plus wedding. Uh, on equallywed.com in 2010. And then for the last 11 years, we've been featuring gorgeous real weddings from around the world. During that time, I have met so many incredible wedding professionals who uh, a good bit of them really wanna work with our community, but don't know where to start or are afraid of saying the wrong thing. They're just somewhere, some hesitation or just some, a need for more education. So we launched Equally Wed Pro, which is the ultimate guide to uh, being LGBTQ plus inclusive in the wedding and events industry. So we have the certifi certification course that Julie mentioned, and just an overall educational platform and community with the intention of essentially it's selfish. I really want to give my community more wedding pros to choose from who 
not will not only will just tolerate the LGBTQ plus community, but also celebrate them. And I think the way to do that is through opening minds and hearts through education and empathy. So I am just uh, loving it all. And I'm really excited for this conversation. Thank you so much. I, I love it. And again, just kind of helping everyone become smarter is such an important, not only marketing people that are, are embracing this and inclusive, but also just helping all of us as a community um, do a better job, which I know we can. So I, I think it's amazing. Um, thank you so much. And I know you and Rick have been working closely together even before we connected. Um, Rick, we got connected through people in the community. I've heard your name a million times. We connected before the pandemic. And then of course, you know, you had this big plan for this incredible conference, the pandemic hit. You're still going to have this incredible conference. And I know it's going to be even better now that yes. you've had more time to plan it with even better, uh, more um, incredible nationally known, internationally known speakers, which is exciting. But Rick, tell us how you got started uh, with, you know, the National Gay Association, Wedding Association, and how you started thinking about the, the need for this conference to bring people together, both for education, marketing, and, and so many different reasons. Well, thank you for allowing me to tell my story and, um, and be on here today. Um, Julie, well, and uh, when equally, when um, same-sex marriage became the law of the land, my husband proposed to me. And when we went through the process, we ran in through roadblocks and ran through, you know, the whole scenario, no one baking the cake and the whole, you know, stories you hear about in the news, but you realize, oh my gosh, this is really happening to me. And you just realize, and you look in the mirror, this should not be happening. This should not be happening. And so my, my, my 24 hours of joy of being proposed to and planning the wedding and everything turned into an absolute tragedy and, and disaster of, of, of anger and tears and just, this is silly. Why am I feeling like this? I'm a grown man, I wanna get married. And why am I having all of this pushback uh, just because of who I love? And it just, it was an issue for me. And I just kept saying to myself, there's gotta be a better way. So I went on to plan my wedding and through the process, I found vendors that were accepting of, of and so I'd, I, at the time I lived in Texas and I said, well, you know, we're gonna start, I'm gonna start a website. My Texas gay wedding was created. And so I did it, um, again, I'm a marketing and advertising person. I was 25 years in education, both in private and in public education. And so it was something that I just felt needed to happen to kind of be a resource for other couples. Well, short, soon, shortly that, turned into a national platform of my gay wedding. I took out the Texas part when I moved to uh, California. Well, I went to the MBA conference because at the time I, I, I wasn't, something was missing and I couldn't put my finger on it. I, I just, you know, I was so frustrated because I, I, you know, you have a wedding industry, you have couples getting married and there was a missing link. And I just, for the life of me, I went on, I went on a mission. So I went to the MBA conference in Vegas which is thousands of wedding vendors and thousands of, 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 of seminars. And, and I went to as many as I could. And there was one LGBT uh, uh, presentation, one out of 200 and something. Yeah. And through, through my two days of visiting the, the conference, there was one image of, a, of an LGBT couple that I could see that I could relate to. And I, you know, I went, to, I, went, I went to this conference with this one speaker, which was Joe Meyer, who was amazing. And when I got there, the room was the smallest one they had. Yeah. And it was, it was, there wasn't really a lot of people there. And by the time it started, the room filled. And I, I was looking around going, well, where did these people come from? They sure weren't out there, you know, because I was walking around with Rick Simmons, National Gay Wedding Association, hanging on my neck like a target. And of course that just turned, I got a lot of the turn the backs and talking in the air and all of that complete body language was negative. And I, I, again, it was one of those, okay, something is so missing here. I don't get this. This is a wedding business. We love people. We're supposed to be marrying people. Uh, it was just a missing part of me. So when I sat through and I, and I watched Joe take this crowd and move it. And I realized that what was missing was understanding. What was missing was, was education. What was missing was them really connecting. So I, I, I stalked and I saw I stalked some of the, the wedding vendors back to their booth. And so they began to refer me around to other. And what I realized was that there was a little small percentage of wedding vendors at this conference of thousands 
that were in, that were wanting to be open but didn't really know how to do it. I was talking with one wedding particular person in particular, and her booth was what I call complete white bride. And here she's talking about her, her brother's gay and she, she was, she's going to them. She wanted all these stories. I'm, I'm looking at her going, there's nothing here I can relate to. Yeah. So I, so with that, with that in my heart, I, I came back to Palm Springs and just said, you know, I'm going to do a conference. We have to, we have to create a nonprofit education based foundation and really get, and really get at it because we have a lot of wonderful, wonderful sources out there, resources like Equally Wed, Party Slate, partners that I now have with, with our association that are allies that want to come up. And so that's how it kind of created. So it's just really creating an umbrella of, of, of really allies that are out there and bringing them under the fold and presenting them and trying to educate in, uh, about inclusiveness. So that's how it all started, um, which is that's kind of amazing. like you say, the, the conference is just going crazy right now. Yes. I love it. And I think the timing is great. People want to be together again. These, these so, industry conferences are so important to relationship building and education. And yes, I love the virtual events, but I can't wait to get back in person <laughs> to these events because it's like the people you meet at the dinners and the bar and the breaks that actually lead to interesting things like Absolutely, alliances yeah. and ally relationships. So, um, and Shauna, tell us how you met Rick and your connection um, with um, really helping to educate and really move this association forward. Okay, thank you, Julie, for having me, Party Slate. I'm happy to be here with Rick and Kirsten. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about me, I started my business in 1999 for the reasons that Rick and Kirsten just mentioned. Yeah. Because when I very first started as a wedding planner, there was no one in the San Francisco Bay Area, I live in Oakland, but no one in the Bay Area that were planning at the time commitment ceremonies. And I, I did a little research found out that there were still, there were creatives who didn't want to work with LGBTQ plus couples. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that I wanted to be the person so Rick and Kirsten wouldn't have to have those kind of experiences, yes. right? So finding those creatives, finding those, making sure that I knew how to put that message out there that my couples, I didn't want them to have to come out to every single creative. I wanted them to know that when they hired me and my company that they were taken care of and that they were safe and that I can like plan their amazing weddings, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was extremely excited when I got connected to Rick and first it was just to be a part of the conference when it was when he was planning it in the very beginning. And then ultimately I became the vice president of the association, which I am so hey. I'm so stoked about that right now. This conference is going to be amazing. And I'll talk a little bit more later about why I'm super excited that Rick and Kirsten, because I'm certified with her program as well, like how we're all connected and how the industry is starting to get so connected right now. I have like goosebumps just like I know, me to too. you guys I here. I, seriously, because like <laughs> hearing your stories about, and this is not, we're not talking like 50 years ago. We're talking about just recent time and today that there are still companies and churches and others that do not accept, acknowledge, embrace um, inclusivity in this way. And so I, I, again, I'm just so excited to have the three of you guys here. And I know um, your connection with Rick and Kirsten will, as a real world event company, that, you know, planner designer um, gives you the view firsthand of what you're seeing and what your couples need. And I just think it's so amazing, the collaboration that, that's happening again, both virtually and in, in real life, as my teenagers like to say, in real life, IRL. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna just share my screen. Um, thank you guys for sharing your stories. And I'm just gonna walk through what we wanna cover today. Number one, I know we've already touched on this, why education is so important. Um, we're gonna talk about the certification program, which I'm excited about, the conference, and then um, just a little bit of education on six ways to be more LGBTQ plus inclusive, um, things that maybe we 
so many of us know already, but need that constant reinforcement and reminders. And again, taking it to the next level, um, getting that certification. And then we also have resources available. So just to jump right in, um, would love to hear, you know, why education is so important. And again, I think we know from the stories that you firsthand experienced, but um, I would I would love to just hear from um, the panel on on why education is so important. Um, maybe Shauna, you can start on, on, on your side and tell me from your perspective why you think it's it's so important that we not only get educated ourselves, but help other people um, get smarter in these areas. Okay, thank you, Julie. I feel um, education is super important in our industry, especially because things change so much. And you can never ever feel like if you get to the place to feel like, oh, I know it all, I got this down, you actually don't because mm -hmm. there's things that change every single day. And then with this new, and I'm so extremely happy that we're going down this route with this new um, goal of inclusivity, it's so much to learn within so many different diverse communities. Yes. So that's why you have to continuously, you have to want to learn yes. all the time and then seek. My advice is just to seek where you get the education from, like yes. really make sure you are learning from somebody who is walking. What is it? Walking the walk, talking yep. to talk, something like that. Well, anyway, yeah. make sure oh. the person, <laughs> right. Both make sure that you're getting the information the education from a person who really can back it all up. I agree. But, can, but always thrive to like learn, just learn, learn all the time. Absolutely. And I think um, all these webinars that we've been making available, we talked about inclusive branding, we've talked about so many different topics that are really important. I, I feel like there is a lot of free education or very low cost considering the impact you can make um, by being a more inclusive business or even helping your friend that you know needs to learn these things. So like by being an advocate and ally um, in this area. So I, I agree. Rick, tell me, I know you shared in your founding story, but um, I know you have a full lineup of, of incredible educational speakers beyond just the ones you see at every conference. I'm excited that you have a really diverse sets of people that are coming in. But tell us why you feel like education is, is, so, is so key. Well, 25, as I mentioned previously, I was in education for 25 years. So yeah. for me, education was just an ongoing thing with, with in, in the, from my experience. So as Shonda was saying, you can never learn. If you think you stopped learning, you, you really need to retire because yeah. my life and every day is a learning lesson. And I think when, you know, as, about, as far as education, it's like Shonda was saying, it's, it's, we're an evolving world. And, you know, I think as more people become comfortable you know, with who they are, I believe we're going to see more of this. And, you know, it, as far as being inclusive with all couples, it's just something that we're talking about. We need to continue to talk about because that's the only way we're going to learn and get educated because we don't even know. It's just like when we started, we didn't even know, we didn't even know what we needed to learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all we knew is that we had, you know, LGBT people that now getting married and the wedding industry wasn't even ready for that. Yeah. You Even like contracts weren't ready. Nothing. No, they was, just no. The laws yeah. went into effect, and next thing you know, these these wedding planners and, and everybody in the industry had these couples in front of them, and they didn't know what to do. So where do you go? So there was a lot of making up groundwork, if you will, yeah, because the education wasn't in place. So I think what a lot of us are doing, uh, in particular, we're, we're kind of backing up a little bit, saying, "Come, on, we got to catch up. We got to catch up because there's so much out there that yeah. we got to get the industry moving." Yeah. And it's interesting, even before the, the laws changed, there were, you know, my, I remember my parents went to a commitment ceremony, or it, we called it a wedding, you know, 35 years ago, like, and, and it, there was all these service ceremonies happening, but yet until it wasn't until it was legal that more the mass market kind of like, oh, wow, we better be prepared. And so I, again, in a way it's good, but we probably should have always been, you know, making people, as you guys shared with your story, feel included. Um, and, and in a real way. Um, and, and so um, Kirsten, talk a little bit about, I mean, you've spent so much of your time on the education front, why you feel it's so important. Oh, absolutely, thank you. Uh, well, you know, like you said um, and touched on, our, we, the LGBTQ plus community has been marrying in some form, um, for, for centuries, we've been having our own ceremonies. We've called them weddings for the most part. 
Um, they just haven't been legally recognized. So I think, you know, whenever we can pay tribute to companies like Shonda's and Monique Affair for, you know, being invested in the LGBTQ plus community and weddings for our community before it was a federally yes. recognized thing. I think that's really important, you know, because we mattered before um, June 26, 2015, and our love mattered before then. I think the education component is so important because what I have realized talking to incredibly, you know, heart-filled, wonderful people at conferences I've spoken at and throughout my course and equally wed is that um, a lot of folks think it's okay to just think, I'll, I'll just treat them the way I'd like to be treated. And what we really want people to know is you need to treat people how they would like to be treated. Yeah. And you can't just assume that the LGBTQ plus community thinks like you, loves like you, looks like you, behaves like you, would choose the same outfits for their weddings as you, you know. And so there are a lot of assumptions that go into working with the LGBTQ plus community and education will help you rid yourself of those assumptions and realize what's actually happening. And then you can serve them better, which, you know, it is going to help your profits, but it's also going to help your heart and yes. it's going to help you be a better human and a better business person. So yeah. there's no wrong reason to seek education. Yeah. And I think that um, the majority, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Of course, there's people that are not on board, but for the people that want to do this, it's not like, again, it's a cookie cutter. All is the same. There's so many different, like, the terminology, we're still learning at Party Slate when we write articles about, you know, South Asian weddings, not to say just Indian, not to leave people out. Like there's so many different flavors of inclusivity and it, it, it does take work and, and we're, we're doing the work and we think everyone else should too. And, and that's why I'm just so glad to, many people know the three of you. I want more, I want everybody to know you guys and I really wanna get your message um, out there. Um, so let's talk first um, as we dig into some of the educational components about um, Equally Red, Web Pro, um, but also your certification program and other things you're doing to help um, you know, with this course. And I always like to tell people like, just because it's a course, don't think of it like it's a 10 year program to get you know, like a medical degree, right? This is a very manageable certification process that can be also used for marketing reasons like that you that you got certified i do think it sends the right message and also you can get a lot smarter and not make mistakes that will hurt people or hurt your business so tell us how did you come up with an idea to do this formal certification and tell us a little bit about what it is sure thanks julie so much for being a cheerleader for the course and um and just what you're doing with your platform again i really appreciate it uh, so Equally Web Pro and our um, LGBTQ plus inclusive certification course was born really out of a need of educating the masses at, in, a, in a large scale. I was answering so many different questions on stage and off stage at different conferences I've been speaking at over the last 11 years and with, through, you know, partners through Equally Wed, uh, I basically took all the frequently asked questions as the base to an online course, wanting to answer everybody's questions, but then also give a deep dive, you know, that there's more to just the highlights of what people say is, here's how to be LGBTQ plus inclusive, make sure you offer your pronouns and things like that. And those are very important, but there's so much more into understanding all the nuances of the LGBTQ plus community you know, I had to do a lot of research myself when building out this course. I am, I am queer, or and I also identify as pansexual. But I had to, you know, understand all of the different um, elements of our community. I spoke with university professors and scholars, uh, and a ton of wonderful trans folks. You know, just giving me all different angles to make sure that we represented uh, some all of our community. Um, the intersectionality with different races and religions and that all went into this course it is uh i don't want it to sound intimidating it is very much um manageable digestible everything's on equallywebpro.com it's um learn i could say it's uh, learn from your own place at your own pace so you could you could register today and be uh, certified lgbtq plus inclusive by tonight or you could take six months it's up to you and it's it's all you know videos um q a 
uh, and then a multiple choice exam. And, and, then, and then once you pass, you're certified. And the great uh, benefit to it as well is that it has lifetime access. So we're going through a really awesome refresh of the course right now. Uh, and, but you'll get lifetime access to all of that at you know, no additional charge. So uh, that's another benefit, but you'll learn how to really take care of your LGBTQ clients. But also, even if you have what you think you may think are straight clients, they have LGBTQ plus relatives coming to the wedding. They have LGBTQ plus family and colleagues maybe coming to the wedding. So you're going to really be ready for you know, the next wave of inclusivity. And Gen Z, especially, they're expecting inclusivity across the board. So even if they personally don't identify as LGBTQ+, they're expecting you to have inclusive practices. So this is just really important for your business. And uh, I know that your heart's there, so it's important to uh, get everything up to speed in terms of education so that you can really communicate your values appropriately and correctly. That's amazing. And I know um, this is more of a technical business geeky question, but I was wondering, you know, putting a course like this together, mm -hmm. the video, the certification, like, so now I'm like kind of using my tech mind. How did you even approach this? Like putting it together? Did you use a third party platform? Because there's a lot of third party learning platforms. Like, what did you do? Because I, I can imagine this is, was overwhelming to do, but you managed to pull it off. Yes. Um, so I, I knew that I wanted to create an online course and I, you know, went to Google, our yeah. friend Google, and a ton of people were recommending Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I.com. And it is an incredible platform for building an online course. It's okay. also great for building memberships or, or anything else uh, in terms of online education. So I highly recommend it. Okay. And, and that's what we use and we love it. It's just, it's great user friendly um, great interface uh, for the techies. And uh, yeah. um, I just, I just love it. Awesome. Because we've actually, even at Party Slate, we're doing all this digital marketing mm -hmm. certification. And we've talked about, you know, we have all these recordings. Do we put it in a, in a, you know, digital marketing certification course? I mean, high level for SEO, email marketing. So not to scare my team, but it's something we've talked about. <laughs> They're like, oh no, Julie's got a new idea. But I do think um, making it digestible in pieces is so important. And of course, video instruction is so much better than just reading. So I, I'm, I really, so far, um, really love the, the course. And I just give you a lot of credit for making it happen. A lot of people knew we needed this, but actually making it happen is, is incredible. So thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. yeah. And I, um, I highly recommend if, you, if anybody has any Kajabi questions, I'd be happy to answer and send you over to, um, there's a private Facebook group for Kajabi um, users, they're just really customer service focused. So, um, awesome. just on an aside note, they're they're great. Awesome. Yeah. I, sorry, I didn't mean to geek out a little no, bit. No, that's pulling great. it off it's is great, not an easy thing to do. So it's a great question. And on just one more on that note, for any business folks watching, you know, when they're thinking about how do you create an online course or why would you, you just really gather up your FAQs. You know, if you've been doing this for a decade or two or three, you have so much to share. And uh, so it's, it's a great thing um, to do. I, I highly encourage it. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for doing that and putting it together and making it easy, um, manageable. So it's not intimidating to scare people off. Cause I do think some people are like, oh God, I'm busy again. I don't have time. Well, it's actually very um, manageable, um, which is great. Thank so, you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Rick, um, let's talk a little bit about um, the conference and talk a little bit about your journey with this conference on um, what it was to what it is. Because again, sometimes I always say things happen for a reason. I do not mean to say the pandemic happened for a reason, but in some cases we took a little step back and thought about how to make things even bigger. I know we did that at Party Slate and we were thinking of doing this, but we had the time to breathe and now we're taking it next level. I feel like this conference, um, the same thing is happening yes. that you had the time I won't say luxury of time, because trust me, we didn't all want to be in this situation, but you had the, the, the gift of time to, to take this to the next level and, and tell, tell us a little bit about you know, what it was, what it's going to be and, and how people can get involved. Well, we're very excited about it. Thank you. Um, you know, initially, when I was, uh, we, we talked about doing this, it was a matter of what can we do to educate wedding planners and the wedding professionals 
other than an on course line, no offense, but you know, it's just, it's just how, how do you touch them? Because, and so I thought, well, conference, let's meet them what they know. They, they love conferences. And so if we let, and then let's, let's, I know, let's teach inclusive awareness. And so that's kind of how it all, mm -hmm. it was a matter of, we need to get, every, we need to get the wedding industry together. I've been doing emails. I've been doing pamphlets. I've been recommended equally wed. You know, it's one of those things where you kind of go, okay, what, what, what else do you do? except get in their face. I thought, well, that's what I need to do. I need to get in their face. Yeah. Well, that's a conference. Yeah. So that's how, that's how the conference came to be. And I was, I was very um, fortunate enough that when I, when I started, when I had the idea of doing it, I started reaching out to a lot of wedding professionals and trying to, just trying to get them involved in whatever. And, it, and, and I was lucky enough to have Shonda come up alongside me uh, Kathy O'Connell, COJ events come up alongside me, Todd Danceforth with Danceforth Photography, just a lot of different professionals that were out there. Um, you know, again, I'm equally WED certified. And so I wasn't out to, I wasn't out to recreate what other individuals were doing that was so well done. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel because equally WED does a wonderful job. That, those, that's my partner for my members. Mm -hmm. uh, Party Slate's my partner for my members to, to elevate so that's what it was. It was a matter of finding all the allies for my members. And so the National Gay Wedding Association, you have to apply. It's not an automatic. We, we, you have to make an application to be a member of it. Um, so, but the conference is open to anyone. Of course, yeah. if you're a member, you do get discounted pricing. If you are a member, uh, we have, we were going to do it here in a smaller resort. We've now taken it to the Hyatt resort in Indian Wells, which is just a world-class wedding venue. They've done a multi-million dollar wedding venue there, which was so excited to showcase at, at the conference. Uh, we have secured uh, Chastin Buttigieg as our, as our evening keynote. We also have uh, Sarah Cunningham from Free Mom Hugs uh, yeah. as, our, uh, as our lunch uh, keynote speaker. And for uh, those who don't know who she is, because I know her story, will you tell people who, who she is? Yes. Yeah, so when, when I started out to do the Inclusive Awareness Conference, there was, there was a story that, that, that just was in my heart for years. And it was one of those, I'm going to cry. I'm going to try not to. Um, but Sarah's story was told through a story I heard of someone who stood out because her son was gay and there were, there were couples being turned away by and turned away by their parents, by churches. And, and so Sarah being in the ministry and having a gay son went to a pride parade, happy pride. And she hugged on family and just other couples that weren't there that were there. And, you know, kids did, and, and adults that hadn't been hugged by their mom or, or, and rejected for years. And so she became the she just stood there and said, free hug, free mom hug. Who wants a hug? Who wants a hug? And so she stood at, at pride events and pride parades and did nothing but hug on people. That's all she did. And then people came to her and said, would you marry us? And wow. she's like, yeah, of course I'll marry you. Well, as a gay man, I followed that story. I thought, you know, for a woman to do that because she loved her son so much unconditionally, she was willing to do anything. That's, that's, that's moving a mountain for me in, yeah. my, in my book. Yeah. So to me, Sarah's story is amazing. So she's now built this organization, nonprofit. It's around the world, Free Mom Hugs. And she is an ally for LGBT, not only our family and community, but, but, but kids, trans. It's just, it's just a wonderful thing she does to lift them up, give them, empower them. And mm -hmm. so, you know, my message at the, at the conference with wedding vendors and wedding professionals hearing her, you know, the, the question is going to be is where's the Sarah and you? Yeah. Where's the Sarah and you to stand up and take and take charge of your business? And where's your heart check at to make a change, to do something? And I'm not saying go out and hug people at a pride parade, mm -hmm. but we're all professionals in what we do. And if there's a little thing inside you can do to make a difference, her story is so impactful that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis bought the, the movie rights yeah. uh, to, to her story. Her story will be Jamie starring in the movie. It will be on Lifetime next uh, in 2022. Uh, and she's playing Sarah. 
So it's amazing. I mean, that's, I, that's going to be next, next level exposure. And I think that the thing that, oh. you know, heartbreak from is that some of these couples don't have a mom or dad that will accept them um, no. in any way. No. And um, the, it's bad enough, the vendors and the cake and, you know, that's horrible, but to not have a, a parent that would accept the love that they want is absolutely heartbreaking. It is. And, and, and we know it's out there. Yeah. Right. And I, and, and I believe that at the conference, there's going to be wedding professionals sitting in the audience who's struggling with that. Who they, they have someone gay in their family or LGBT they've identified and they're, 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 they're we're going to reach them. So Sarah can tell that. So that's who Sarah is. Um, and she's an amazing speaker. She has an amazing message. Her son is coming, Parker. He will be there. So yeah. when, when, I, when, I, when I was talking about doing the conference, I wanted to bring together not only wedding professionals, because I felt that wedding professionals can go to any wedding show and see a wedding show. Sure. Right? I wanted to tackle the heart. I wanted to go yeah. after I wanted to go after what drives them to do their business and, it, and, and being inclusive and to all couples is to me where it begins with an ABC of being a wedding professional. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or you don't need to be a wedding professional. I mean, that's yeah. just kind of how I feel. I mean, that's where I'm coming from. So the, the conference, you know, it's going to be wonderful. Black tie with, with Chaston. He's got a wonderful message on inclusivity. If you haven't read his book, I've got something to say. It's an amazing story. Uh, so he will be there uh, again with surprise guests. We also have um, uh, some entertainment lined up. We have just a wonderful slew of speakers. We have panelists that are going to be there. We've got couples coming to be part of the panels that uh, professionals can learn from. It's going to be a real safe environment. So for those wedding professionals that are looking to, to, to tap in to inclusivity, you know, that's why we're going virtual. We're going around the world. You can do virtual tickets or you can go in person and be a part of the festivities and the dinners and the networking yeah. because that's what we are. We're like-minded networking because yeah. we're going to be creating chapters. We are creating chapters across the country. So this is a way to connect. Great. And it's another it's silver lining of pandemic is, you know, we didn't do as many hybrid events. And of course, it's not the same as being there. But for those who can't be there, they can participate and see the speakers right. and record you know, all the videos. I think that's amazing. And, and Shonda, tell us about your role um, in the conference. I know you're the VP, which congratulations, um, in the association. Tell us a little bit about your perspective on the conference and what you're excited about. Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm excited about just, just like the excitement that Rick has for putting this all together. He gets us all pumped up too. But the other thing that I really love is that, like Rick said, we are having, we have such a diverse group of speakers and we're offering something that's different from all the other conferences that have happened in the past. And Julia, I, I really understood, and I, I can feel you when you said that the pandemic kind of made maybe some good changes, but I feel like it's, it's the biggest thing that happened is that we realized that we can include inclusivity, we can include everybody yes. because having that virtual component. Yes. And I'm so happy that people are, are honing in on that now and letting every, giving everybody the opportunity to be a part. And Indian Wells, that retreat, I mean, that um, resort is so beautiful. It is absolutely stunning. So everybody- I, Well, I can't out. wait to, as a media partner for the conference, yeah. to put a spotlight on all of your sponsors and your partners. So including, I can't wait to see uh, the venue, your photographer, your planner, all of the photos um, from these, especially the evening events, which I'm yes. sure would be great. Um, we can't wait to, to put those on Party Slate and to amplify all of your hard work and hopefully help build it even bigger for the next year. Yes, and I'm super excited that Kathy and I, we get the task of also designing. So that's gonna be so, in addition to the other tasks, but that's gonna be exciting too. I think, it, you know, we are, the event professional community is so hardworking. We're always working on other people's events. And I know people appreciate when they come to these conferences that they get to be a guest. And it's very rare that they are guests at other people's events. So I'm sure all of your hard work will be appreciated. And of course, we are going to make sure everyone sees it, even if they weren't at the event. Yay, good. 
I love it. Well, that's awesome. Um, so jumping back to the educational piece, we we wanted to you know talk a little bit about um, what are some of the things that our listeners um, can do to be more inclusive. And so, um, Kirsten, you put together these six ways, and I know there's the whole certification program, so there's no way we can capture it in in a webinar. We're, we won't ask you to, but could just could you walk us through what some of these things are that you feel very passionate about and then we'll kind of wrap up um, and please if anyone has questions I should have said this earlier please use the all attendees and chat uh, and panelists um, in the chat and please please ask your questions um, as we're going sure thanks so much Julie uh, so yeah these are some really important things that you can do um, right away uh, you are let's see not you are but it's really important to consider uh, sharing your pronouns if you're comfortable and your pronouns being she, her, they, them, he, him, or there are other pronoun options. And actually the list is almost feels endless. If you Google pronouns, um, you can find out pronouns that fit to um, exactly to your gender identity, but our pronouns are the way that we share our gender identity. And so for me, you know, I'm cisgender, which means I was assigned female at birth and I identify as female now, so I'm cisgender and I use she, her pronouns. So different people use different pronouns and we can't assume what their pronouns are. Uh, one way that we can mark ourselves as an ally is, and an ally even within the LGBTQ plus community is sharing our pronouns. So even if you think, oh my gosh, like I'm, I totally, I am a woman, I look like a woman, why would anybody think I'm not a woman? Why would I need to share my pronouns? You need to share your pronouns because it normalizes that you can't always guess who, yeah. who what pronouns are, you know. Um, so I think it's really important to not only share your pronouns, but ask for others, you know, in terms of like in your inquiry forms, what are your pronouns? And don't use preferred. We don't use that um, preferred implies choice. And your pronouns, just like your gender identity, are not a choice. So just mm -hmm. say, you know, my pronouns are she, her. I'd love to know what your pronouns are if you feel safe sharing. Um, yeah, I think that, that was a new tip because I do people say per, I see people say preferred mm -hmm. they're like okay you can call me anything but this is preferred so like you're saying don't do that it right just, what are right yes and that's yes. and as Shonda said a long time ago a long time ago hours just when we were big <laughs> when we were starting that's an evolution yeah. of the LGBTQ plus education because preferred pronouns was something that was commonly said even up to like two years ago so right. um so that's, that's why the why ongoing education ongoing education so, exactly yeah. so we yeah. drop that preferred we're trying to get the word out um and so uh and not we as and i started dropping preferred somebody else dropped it and then we're yes. like oh, okay that's what we're yeah. doing i get it so um using gender neutral language always uh basically means you know make sure that you're not referring to your clients as um, not specific clients but to all clients as the bride and the groom or yeah. my brides and grooms, or just talking to your clients as if they're all brides, because that's that's just not all inclusive. And it's not that brides or grooms are bad words, but you have to know that a particular client identifies that way to use those terms. So in your contracts, in your marketing language, your Instagram captions, wherever you're using um, wedding labels or identifiers, uh, it's either use couples, which is gender inclusive or gender neutral, or bridegrooms and marriers, or something else that's on brand for you, like lovebirds, but just make it known that you don't expect your clients to all be cisgender, heterosexual brides and grooms. And, and also knowing that not everybody who, um, you know, not everybody in the LGBTQ plus community, even if they are cisgender, uh, doesn't mean that they necessarily identify with the word bride or with the word groom, but they yeah. might. Either one is okay. So you need to leave room for all. Right. Um, number three, be an ally year round. Uh, as Rick, Shonda, and I all know as part of the LGBTQ plus community, it's very strange when someone has never said anything about the LGBTQ plus community. And then all of a sudden, June 1st, they got a rainbow flag out. Yeah. And, and it feels like we're being pandered to and tokenized. Yeah. So don't do that. Yeah. Um, Elevate LGBTQ plus voices. You know, there are so many incredible LGBTQ plus people around you of all different races, all different faiths, all different sizes, all different physical abilities. Uh, it's important to elevate, elevate these people and their companies 
whether, you know, if you're shopping black and LGBTQ plus owned, or, you know, people who have different physical abilities or people in the South Asian market that, you know, don't get elevated enough, it's important that you are elevating them and, you know, sharing their content with permission um, versus just making your own. Uh, so show a variety of LGBTQ plus people in your marketing and social media. You know, I think that one thing that I've noticed just in from being a professional LGBTQ plus person since the late 90s is that although it, see, it feels like the world likes to put the face of LGBTQ plus community as white and cisgender, and that's just not who we are. I mean, we, I'm white. But I'm not the only, I mean, you know, like we have a variety of people. So if you want to attract a variety of people, of races and religions and um, physical abilities and um, everybody, uh, then you need to put it out there in your social media, in your imagery. Um, just make sure that you're showing a variety of humans. Um, and then when you are using LGBTQ plus people, make sure they're real LGBTQ plus people. Like if you're doing styled shoots, make sure those are real LGBTQ plus people. We prefer couples, but even if they're just LGBTQ plus identifying, um, that's really important for authenticity. So don't just like get two straight people to pose as LGBTQ plus weird it, people. It's weird and inauthentic. Um, and then number six, yeah, I've always said that I can see yeah. a style shoot like a mile away. I just have an eye for that. And it's yeah. some of them are really easy, like the centerpieces where you can't see across the table, like, you know, when it's a style shoot, right. We always encourage as much as possible. There's so much real wedding content out there and featuring real uh, diversity in couples is just so, so important. As you it's said, so true. It's so true. Um, and then my last tip is get educated, you know, um, you know, take our LGBTQ plus inclusive certification course, talk to real LGBTQ plus people, but I would caution you, you know, don't just grab the first gay person or queer person you see, because one, they may not be prepared to speak for anybody but themselves. And two, we don't want to put that emotional labor on anyone who didn't volunteer for it and who's not going to get paid for it. So you want to make sure that you're bringing, you know, going to people who have done a lot of research and who are prepared to really give you a, a thorough education. But the educational resources are out there. So yeah. just, you know, seek as um, I think Shonda said, I'm going to quote Shonda over and over, um, you know, yeah. but it's um, it's really important just to do the work because we're we're ever evolving and, you know, humans. And it's and changing. Yeah, it's changing yeah, every so month, every stay year. Stay up, stay up to and date. Shonda you know? and Rick, I'm going to kind of ask you not to put you guys on the spot, but anything you wanted to layer on Shonda to to these six points that that are really um, important to you. Obviously, again, we could talk for days about all of these different topics, but anything stand out to you as important? Um, they're all they're all amazing and important. And the other thing that I would like to add in from a creative perspective is to like when you when you get your clients, listen. Like the key thing is to listen and never assume. Just that is the the basics, right? Um, just a little, a little story that I had. And even with me being in this business for like 22 years, yep. I learned a lesson because for one of my clients, I said, I asked, I was asking about flowers we were designing. I said, oh, um, so what kind of bouquet do you want? And it was two, two, um, two female humans. And one of them said, well, I actually don't want a bouquet. I want a flower crown. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Note to self, next time moving forward now, I just ask, how do you visualize flowers showing up in your wedding? See oh, I how, love that how I switch that? Yes. How, that's how you can make things inclusive. And someone, I, I believe her name was Nicole. I'm sorry, Nicole, if, it's, if that's not your name. But the question that you asked was, how can you make the change and not make it feel like it's performative? Yeah. So it really has to, you really have to do some soul searching and make sure that diversity and inclusion is a part of your core values. Because if something is your core value, it'll never be performative. And if you just switch the question around, just like I did, it's you're not changing it for anyone in particular, you're making it more inclusive for everyone. Because yes. you may have a husband and wife couple 
and the husband wants a bouquet. Who the hell knows? Oops, yeah. sorry, sorry, Julie. Who knows? <laughs> okay. But the point is, you ask it in a way so every the person yeah. you're asking feels included. I love and that the- example so much because even forget the flowers, but asking open-ended questions like, what is your sense on this? What were you visualizing? It doesn't put you in a corner, even like forget inclusivity, just working with clients, but inclusivity, especially, I love the way you switch that question. And it's so easy to do that, but it doesn't come naturally when you've been doing weddings with bouquets for 25 years, you know? And that, that was my other thing too, Julie, is that it takes like, once you get into the habit of doing it, yeah. like I had to switch myself from saying guys. Now guys is not that, not it can be used inclusively because guys sometimes just mean everybody. Yeah. But once, when we really think about it, I had to, it was such a habit. I had to say everybody, everybody. I was practicing yeah. like President Obama. Yeah. He would always say everybody <laughs> or yeah. everyone or something right yeah. so I had to do that and then I had to teach my team to do that so yeah. that's another way to make sure it's not or it doesn't appear to be performative you get your whole team on board yes. and then mm-hmm. you reach out and you tell your creative partners like if you want to work with me here is a language you need to use yes. so then you're creating your your inclusive environment right there and nothing will be performative about it. And the same question to ask too for attire. You ask, what kind of attire are you wearing? As opposed to, are you wearing a dress? Or not yeah. wanting to ask that question. Because you don't want to make it seem like right or wrong. Exactly. Or yes or no. It's like, what do you pick? What do you envision for attire? It's, yes, 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 yes. That I is love. my advice. I love that. I'm just This conversation, I have like goosebumps. Like I'm not only learning, but I just... It's such an important conversation to have. You each had your own experiences with this. There's millions and millions of people around the world that are feeling this way. And it's not, it's subtle changes that can make such a big difference if we all get educated. So um, Rick, did you want to add anything else um, to this slide? The only two things I would add is as a wedding professional, you know, come up with your own um, inclusive policy. What does that mean? You know, write it out you know, write it out, put it on your wall. uh, And do you believe it? I mean, do you really believe it? And if if you believe it, then those around you need to believe it as well. And and you need to uphold the standard. Uh, You know, having the bus boy in the corner whispering things under his breath is not acceptable at at, at anything, regardless. And it happens. And I think as a wedding professional, uh, we've all seen where we turn our back and just say, knock it off, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, no, (laughs) we're done. Uh, yeah. So I think I think every person needs to really write it out. What does it mean to them, and share it, and and hold that standard. The one, the second thing, and then we'll move on is um, one of my biggest pet peeves uh, is is when I look when I was when I talk with a wedding venue about becoming a member, and we do a virtual thing, and they take me on a tour, we do this, and I see the bride suite, yeah, the groom suite, which we talked about, um, and it's just it's it's it just it, and I don't have any hair. But I do have hair that stands up on the back of my head. Yeah. You know, it's one of those, it's so simple. So simple. Get rid right. of it. Just yeah. get rid of it. Yeah. It's time. You know, because it sends such a negative connotation and unwelcoming message to any LGBT person, period. Yeah. When you when you have that. And I see that so many times in wedding venues when they're taking me on a tour. When it's just, it's I just, I just, I'm like, we have to talk about this. And then it's like the guy, the guy's suite is like the pool table and whatever. And the, I mean, it's just, it's so wrong. It's that, so yeah. wrong. It's yeah. so wrong. Yeah. It's like so many when ways. I was, when I was looking at things, I, like, I mean, I would rather have the bridal suite. It's more pretty. Yeah. You know, I don't like pool, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying, those are things that we go through. So when you look at so a wedding venue, if you're, if you're worried about, you know, booking weddings, get rid of it. You know, call yeah. it a couple suite. I love yeah. what, what Kirsten said with the lovebird suite or just anything that's that's out there that's not bride yeah. and groom yeah. or are sending that negative connotation to us. I, I agree. I was going to mention that before, but I know that a lot of that is in the certification, the language in the contracts, the language that the venue uses, right, yeah. all of those things matter. And it might not seem like a big deal, but 
on, when someone's planning their special day and something like that reminds them of the pain and they, you know, people that aren't oh, being, yeah. into, it's, it's a trigger, right? And why do we think <laughs> that's trigger? exactly it? It's a yeah. I don't know why, why we need them. And so Julie, if you, or, or just to onto that point too, if when you see things that are not inclusive of who you are, uh, then it, it's not only a trigger for the pain, but then you wonder, does this person really want to be serving me? Yeah, absolutely. I, I really feel like it's, it's the message overall is bad for your business. It's bad for the couple. Um, so I know for so long, we've talked about, you know, what we need to do. And I'm actually going to, before I go to the resources, um, one thing I'm really proud of, and Nicole, who leads our DEI committee, her Wi-Fi did, did not work, so she's not on here today, but worked really hard with our internal team um, to add kind of a diversity and inclusivity, um, you know, uh, filter here. And the fact that we have kind of this uh, owned, you know, business is the first step. It's not the only thing we're going to be doing in addition to, you know, extra attention and care on the images and the credit, not only diversity of images, but diversity in credits, meaning diversity in the types of companies we're highlighting. But this is something new that we added um, to enable people to add some of those um, diversity filters that I'm really proud of. Um, I will say, um, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking like, what is the right, what are the right categories? What are the right things? Because again, like everything's changing, learning. So we would love feedback from this panel on how we did our first release and, and how we can do better. But we're excited to keep layering on more inclusive gestures on Party Slate on our social media. We do have millions and millions of reach, you know, reach a, a month through, you know, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Party Slate. Um, and we want to use it for good and we want to continue partnering with the leaders in the industry so we can continue to get smarter and amplify all the great work you're doing. So we've listed, um, did you wanna add something, Shauna? I did. I wanna say, Julie, that thank you so much for doing that, for adding that diversity filter because, because of everything and the shift in the industry, I have, I have now so many couples who are very intentional, like realizing how much money it is to produce an amazing wedding and how they want to encourage or they want to be very intentional about yes. using um, black and brown creatives, using yes. LGBTQ plus creatives. Like that is really huge for you adding that on and hopefully everybody else will take yes. note to that and start yes. doing yes. it. Because like yes. I said, a lot of people are very intentional. I'm so glad you said that because it, it is in a way um, there's so much like, you know, you can make mistakes. We could have a wrong filter. We missed a filter. Like there is no right or wrong. Like it's, it's developing real time. But what I said and what our DEI committee said is, even if we make a mistake, number one, we will fix it. And number two, it will show that this is something everyone should be thinking about. And that, again, I'd rather make a mistake uh, than not do anything. And so I got to yes. give Nicole and all of our team um, we have people from each of our departments on this committee. And again, we're just a company of 35, but this group of eight people, I mean, they're, they're talking to people like you, they're talking to the community, they're doing research, they're getting certified. Um, we are kind of that lightning rod of what is the right thing to do? And if things change and we will make mistakes, we're going to change along with the, the industry and the best practices. So um, thank you for, for that shout out, but it's not me, it's my team that's doing incredible, incredible work. And then these are resources, guys, that are available to the industry, um, in, including um, kind of the uh, Instagram and website um, addresses for all these different groups. And I know Equally Wed has the website and Equally Wed Pro, um, so both of those you can access. And then these are some other groups that you guys suggested we add, but I do want to say that the, the three of you guys are also great, incredible resources. And I, I can't believe we're out of time. We only have a minute left. I thought we, we could go for another hour, but um, you know, Rick, Shauna, and, and Kirsten, like you guys are such great resources. I know you speak a lot, you're available, you have the conference, you have the certification, but here's all their contact information um, because I know you guys are great. Um, resources yourself to point people in the right direction on what, on what they need. So um, I think that's all we have time for. Any maybe final thoughts? I'll go through the group. Um, Shonda, any final thoughts that you want to share? I do really quickly. I want to say thank you so much for having this panel. And I also wanted to say um, that I am very 
happy and very excited the way that our industry is coming together because I am a member of the National Gay Wedding Association and then I'm also a member of the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Professionals. And to be at a place and time where both of my worlds can combine and support yes. each other as an industry and it just makes me seriously feel like crying because it's yes. it wasn't like this when I first started. So now that we are here and we can support each other to elevate our industry, let's keep it going. Let's just yes. do amazing things from here. So that I was my last, my last emotional plea. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much. Rick, any final thoughts? Well, I, you know, again, I want to invite everyone to come to the conference virtually or in person. I mean, even if you're thinking about or you know, Kirsten brought up a really good point, which I talk about a lot, and that is, you know, your business, if, if, you know, you may not have a gay couple you're marrying or an LGBT couple you're marrying, but they could have relatives and family. And you yeah. got to see, you got to get outside the box. Yes. And if you're going to have a successful business, then you have to really think about all of the customer base and you have mm -hmm. to think about educating yourself. And, and then a, a conference and these resources are a way to do that. So I totally just encourage to constantly seek uh, education and Absolutely. the resources that we're putting out there. At Party Slate, we say inspired events, inspire people. And I, I think that this event is going to really, really inspire people, Rick. Um, Kirsten, any final thoughts? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, um, not only to uh, Julie and Kylie behind the scenes and Nicole uh, and then Rick and Shonda for all of us being here, but also the attendees who were with us live and anyone who is going to tune in later. This is really important stuff that we're not, not just us being passionate about, but I think it's really incredibly important for society moving forward. And I think that it's, um, it's exciting, you know, to, to talk about and to get passionate about. And, and if you have any type of fear or apprehension, I would I encourage you, and even if you don't have fear or apprehension, come and get certified, but also know that you know, at least I know at Equally Web Pro, we're a shame-free, judgment-free zone. You don't know what you know. You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And it's okay that you didn't know it before. Uh, you know, we are all learning and growing and figuring out how to be better humans to one another. So I just appreciate y'all being part of the journey. Well, thank you guys again. I literally was like the edge of my seat, this entire panel. This was one of the most kind of like, I, I don't know, feel good, hopeful, you know, panels that we've had and all of these great things happening. And again, Shonda, I'll also emphasize I'm an ally on the, um, the national, it's a long word, National Society for Black Wedding and Event Professionals. I've actually told them we need to shorten a little bit, but anyway, that's a side point. Um, I, I just feel good Agree. things are happening. <laughs> good things are happening. Um, you got, you are the people that are making the change. You, you are seeing what needs to happen. You're making the change and then you're bringing all of us along with you. So thank you for being with us. We are out of time. If we didn't get to all your questions, you can always reach out to all our experts or myself, and we will share this recording with the industry and, and, uh, not just on pride month, we are going to keep this year round, you know, highly marketed and focused so that people can learn about these incredible um, experts and resources. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, appreciate thank your time. You. We will talk soon. Hopefully see each other soon. Yes. Yes. Bye. 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 Thank you everyone.